The celebration of First Communion liturgies with children are times of great joy in the life of a parish. These events are significant spiritual milestones for those who receive the sacrament. They also serve as opportunities for a renewal of faith amongst family, friends, and the entire parish community. Singing must be given great importance in all celebrations, but it is to be especially encouraged in every way for masses celebrated with children in view of their special affinity for music. The liturgy has a particular sacred language and special symbols that naturally engage the minds and imaginations of young children. Parish leaders involved in planning First Communion celebrations should keep in mind that the selection and use of liturgical elements will have a lasting impression on the spiritual development of the young people participating in these liturgies. It's important to avoid introducing any practices into the liturgy that would make it seem like a classroom catechetical presentation or a form of entertainment. Keeping in mind the importance of the day for the children receiving their First Communion, Mass should be celebrated in a prayerful and dignified manner and in accordance with the Church's official liturgical books. Only approved options listed in these books should be used. The music chosen for First Communion Masses should reflect the theological significance of the sacrament being received. It should also be appropriate for a parish celebration that welcomes Catholics, non-Catholics, regular attendees, and visitors. Special care should be taken to make sure that musical texts conform with Catholic doctrine. The hymns chosen for First Communion celebrations usually have texts relating to the Eucharist. It's important to not choose hymns that have language that implies that the elements are still bread and wine after consecration, or that the bread and wine are merely symbols of another reality or person. Additionally, poetic license should conform to customary usage of scripture and liturgical tradition. For example, bread and bread of life are scriptural idioms for the Eucharist itself, and so are permitted. However, the word wine is not used in the same way, so hymns that refer to the precious blood as wine are not appropriate. The primary focus of First Communion liturgies should be on the reception of the Eucharist, and on the celebration of the liturgical action as a whole. In some parishes, an emphasis is placed on having those who are receiving their First Communion perform a song together as a group for their families. This is an example of performance music and is not appropriate for the celebration of the liturgy. When a choir, those receiving the sacrament or anyone else, offers a musical presentation which does not have as its goal the accompaniment of the liturgical action, the focus shifts from the liturgy to a group or individual. In fact, all who are present are called upon to actively participate in the liturgy. Any form of performance music should be avoided. If, for pastoral reasons, it is not possible to end an established practice of performance music at a particular parish, it is advisable to find a more suitable venue for these songs. For example, as a prelude before Mass begins, after the Mass before the photos are taken, or in the classroom at the end of the final class before reception of the sacrament. In the Catholic Church, the pipe organ is the traditional musical instrument because, in the words of the Vatican II document, Sacrosanctum Concilium, it can most effectively elevate people's spirits to God and things above. The document also states that wind, string, or percussion instruments may be used, provided they are truly suitable for sacred use or can be made suitable. We will now discuss the music needed for a First Communion liturgy. In most places, it is customary to sing a hymn at the beginning of Mass. If a hymn is sung, an entrance chant, also known as the introit, may be intoned when the celebrant reaches the altar to begin Mass. 
This works particularly well if there is an insensation of the altar. It is also possible to sing an entrance chant before the opening hymn. There are several options for this action, but if the Kyrie, Lord have mercy, is not included in the penitential act, it must immediately follow it. On Sundays, especially during Easter time, the rite of sprinkling can be substituted for the penitential act. The Gloria is sung on all Sundays outside of the seasons of Advent and Lent. It is preferred that the psalm be sung rather than spoken, since the psalms were written as hymns. The cantor can sing the verses of the psalm from the ambo or choir section. The response to the psalm is sung by the congregation, unless the psalm is sung straight through without a response. It is important to note that according to the general instruction of the Roman Missal, songs or hymns may not be used in place of the responsorial psalm. A cantor or choir should lead the singing of the acclamation by the congregation while the cantor or choir alone sings the verse. The gospel may be chanted by the deacon or priest. The universal prayer may be sung by a deacon or cantor. During the offertory, a chant, hymn, or choral piece is sung, or an instrumental piece may be played. The three acclamations during the Eucharistic prayer are the Sanctus, Holy, 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 Memorial Acclamation, and Great Amen. These acclamations do not accompany any liturgical action. Instead, they are the prayer of the liturgy to be sung or said by all the people with the priest. In parishes where many language groups are represented, singing the Sanctus using a simple Latin chant may be a way of encouraging all present to participate in singing this acclamation together and with one voice, if this setting is already known by many who will be present. The Lord's Prayer is sung or said by all the faithful together. It should never be sung by a soloist alone. There are many settings of the Agnus Dei or Lamb of God available in different languages. In parishes where several language groups are represented, singing the Agnus Dei using a simple Latin chant may be a way of encouraging all present to participate in singing this litany together. The singing of the communion chant, which can be either an antiphon or a hymn, begins as soon as the celebrant begins receiving the Blessed Sacrament. This song may be sung alternately by the choir and the people, or similarly by a cantor and the people, or entirely by the people, or by the choir alone. It should never be sung solely by a cantor. The communion chant may be followed by additional hymns or choral pieces. In many parishes, it is a tradition to sing a hymn while the ministers process out of the church at the end of Mass. If a hymn is sung, it's best for the celebrant to remain in the sanctuary for a period to join in the singing, since the congregation often begins to leave as soon as the celebrant leaves the church. The children who have received First Communion often join the recessional procession. For special celebrations, it is also appropriate for the musicians to play instrumental music during the procession to reflect the joyful mood of the occasion. In the Archdiocese of New York, many First Communion liturgies are celebrated during the Easter season. When this is the case, the music chosen may appropriately reflect the Paschal joy of this period. First Communions are also often celebrated on Saturdays or during the month of May, so hymns and pieces dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary are also suitable on these days. The use of a seasonal Marian antiphon or other Marian hymn is also fitting for a closing or recessional hymn. For answers to additional questions and to view the extended print version of these guidelines, please visit the Archdiocesan Office of Liturgy website at www.nyliturgy.org. May God bless our children who will be receiving Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist.